In this video, I will show you how we can find the hourly bias the easiest way. Because who said that we need to have a daily bias if we are trading on the 1 minute and 5 minute time frame? Well, I have 3 accurate ways to find out the hourly bias. The first approach which I like to use is using previous 4 hour high and previous 4 hour low. And this may sound a bit familiar. It's because it's the same as previous days high and low. And I think most of us already know what previous days high and previous days low is. And if you don't know what it is, then I've made a way more in-depth video about this ICT concept. So check that video out. Now, an example of how we can use previous 4-hour high and low is basically the same way we do in the data time frame, of course. So for example, here we can see price failed to make a close beneath previous 4-hour low. So then where's the drawn liquidity? It's previous 4-hour high. And then for the next day, we can see price makes a close above previous 4-hour high and also previous previous 4-hour high. The same goes for this candle. We can see price reached previous 4-hour high, makes a close above it. And now we can see price made a consolidation candle. And that means we could be anticipating price to reach into either one of the sides of previous 4 hour high or the previous previous 4 hour high I mean or reach into a point of interest which could for example be this fair value gap now where comes the draw on liquidity it becomes previous previous 4 hour high as we can see price also failed to close beneath previous 4 hour low and previous previous 4 hour low and we can indeed see price makes a close above previous 4 hour high previous previous and then previous 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 4 hour high so that's how we can use previous 4 hour high to our advantage. A bearish example could be something like this, where we can see that price made a close beneath previous 4 hour low. And again, price reached previous 4 hour low, but fails to make a close beneath it. Now, previous 4 hour high becomes a draw on liquidity. And we can see price failed to reach previous 4 hour high. And that's an example of where it does not work. But most of the time, as I've shown you, it do indeed work. Where becomes the draw on liquidity? Previous 4-hour low. Price failed to make a close beneath the previous 4-hour low, as we can see. Previous 4-hour high becomes a draw on liquidity. Here we can see price did indeed fail to reach that high. And it could be that there was a ST divergence, but I am not sure about this as I'm only looking at NQ. So then we can see price makes a close beneath previous Four hour low, where it becomes the draw on liquidity, it becomes previous four hour low. And if we look over here to the left, we can also see the price run out liquidity, meaning that we are mostly bearish. Move down here, price reached previous four hour low, then from there, previous four hour high, made a close beneath after that previous four hour low. So that's also a bearish example on how we can use previous four hour highs and lows to our advantage. Now that we have found out the first very important factor when it comes to finding out the hourly bias, I think we should jump straight over to the next one, which is PD arrays. Now using PD arrays to find out the bias on the hourly time frame is really straightforward. It's just about acknowledging what PD arrays are getting respected and disrespected. For example, right here we can see that we have this large Favalli gap, and this large Favalli gap, if we extend it out, we can see it have been used several times to push price lower but then suddenly price makes a close above this FEG. And this close above the FEG signals to us that price is now starting to disrespect bearish PDA rays. And if we're bearish, we don't want to see price disrespect bearish PDA rays, right? So then price also created a bullish PDA ray in the meantime, creating a IFEG. And then we can indeed see price makes a retracement into this bullish PDA ray, makes a small mohawk into that bullish PDA ray, which is a Favalli gap. And then from there, it just moves higher. And that really signals to us that price is respecting bullish Peter race and disrespecting bearish Peter race. And that's what we want to see to clarify the bias. And also another thing that we have to look out for is when price is running out liquidity, as that can also give us an idea of where price is most likely going to reach for. And at the time price ran out this high, if we look over here to the left, we also had a FVG, which got disrespected. So that's how we can use PDA rays to our advantage when it comes to finding out the bias. Another way we can find out the, all the bias is by using a draw on liquidity. And a draw on liquidity is basically where we think price is most likely going to reach for. 
And adrenaline liquidity is not just limited to the hourly bias. We can even use it all the way down to the one minute time frame even. And when we are using adrenaline liquidity, there are some areas which I really like to use, such as low resistance liquidity, equal highs, um, previous days high and previous days low, or for this example, previous four hour high and previous four hour low, or external and internal range liquidity. And I'm going to show you, first of all, an example of external and internal range liquidity. So we can see right here we have a fair value gap. Price makes a retracement into this fair value gap. And if we just look, where do we have a high? Well, we have a high up here, which just ran the previous external range liquidity. So then price is moving from external to internal. And then when price moves from internal, then external range liquidity becomes a drawn liquidity. And I have made a separate video about all these important factors that you have to know when looking for a draw on liquidity, which is under the bias and hourly bias guide. So I will definitely also recommend watching that video to get a more in-depth explanation about these concepts. When it comes to combining everything together, we can then see how right here we have a fair value gap which have been traded down to several times. And now at this time, we can see that price reached down into this fair value gap and we could be anticipating higher prices. And that's where we can use previous four hour highs and lows to anticipate if price is willing to move higher from this FVG. And if we were to find it for liquidity, we could look at this high right here, which would be considered external range liquidity. And we know this is internal range liquidity. So this high should be a obvious draw on liquidity. Now let's just see what happens. And right here we can see that price made a large wick, but then failed to close above previous four hour high. And that means we could be anticipating lower prices, right? But we do have to remember we are delivering from a four hour AVG. So let's just see what happens in the next candle. Right here, we can see price do still fail to make a close above previous four hour high, but then we can see mage a large candle body and also is now starting to make a very bullish delivery from this FEG and is disrespecting bullish or sorry bearish order blocks and we also have equal highs up here and again we can see price still failed to reach previous four hour high but now is very close to this high and again price ran that high now with previous four hour high so then previous four hour low should be a draw on liquidity and we can see price reached previous four hour low, failed to make a close beneath it. So now previous four hour high down here is a draw on liquidity. And now we can indeed see price reached previous four hour high, also previous previous four hour high and external range liquidity. So we can see that when price is delivering from a fair value gap, that significantly impacts previous four hour highs and lows when it comes to finding out the bias by using it that way and also when we have a clear draw on liquidity it doesn't really matter whether the price is going to respect or disrespect previous four hours highs and lows as we can see price if we play out the next candle run that high if we were to drop down here on the 15 minute time frame we could then see that price is indeed also very bullish from that FVG delivery and now here's where we're going to use our four hour bias or our hourly bias to our advantage so we know that price failed to make a close beneath previous four hour low, as we can see on the four hour time frame right here. And that means that previous four hour high is now the draw on liquidity. So then we can look for a setup that is bullish as we also have a much more significant draw on liquidity, which is all the way up here, which is the external range liquidity on the higher time frame. So then we can look for some setups, for example, drawing out a discount and a premium. We can see we have an FVG within this premium. So let's see what happens when price makes a retracement. Right here, price makes a retracement and actually makes a very bullish candle right after that, as we can see, made a wick, and then now it's starting to move higher. As we can see, right from there, previous four highs now reach. Let's see if we can manage to take out the external range liquidity. And right after that FVG delivery, price managed to reach that external range liquidity, previous four hour high and this high in between. We can also see on the lower time frame, which is the two minute time frame, we did indeed have some sort of clean or decent delivery from that FEG and we should indeed have trapped shorts within here. So then 
also, if we were to look for a setup, we could then see, for example, this IFG right here from a decent FEG delivery. Take that clean retracement, as we can see, to the tick. Stop loss beneath the low, and then target this high, which makes a decent 1.9 to 2 rescore ratio.